Good morning, and welcome to this, the Liturgy of the Words for the Feast of All Saints Day. This is Father Michael Champ. I'm the pastor of the Old Catholic Church of Antioch, and I'd very much like to welcome you to this lovely gathering. Well, let us begin. In honor of all the saints, let us rejoice in the Lord and keep a festival in their honor. Let us join with the angels in joyful praise to the Son of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us begin, as we always do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray today that the memory of the holy examples of all the saints will inspire us to ask God for forgiveness for our sins. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, today we rejoice in the holy men and women of every time and place. May their prayers bring us your forgiveness and love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We begin today with our first reading, taken from the book of Revelations, chapter 7. Using visionary language, the author of Revelation encourages Christians who are suffering persecution. Just as Oriental kings customarily impressed their seal on their belongings, so also are all who are marked by the seal of God. A reading now from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea, do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They too stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried aloud, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, who are these wearing white robes, and where from, from, when, from whence did they come? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response today is from Psalm 1 or Psalm 24. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Join me. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is your people that longs to see your face. Our second reading is taken from the first book, or the book of 1 John in the New Testament. When we despair... Sometimes human beings turn to escapisms like illicit drugs or alcohol or even suicide. Christians somehow do not give in because they have hope. God loves us. With his help, many Christians before us and some outstanding figures, too, have achieved their goal. With God's help, we hope to do the same. 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, let us prepare now for the reading of the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Join me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is the Feast of All Saints. It's a day when we commemorate those whose exemplary lives have bestowed upon them our respect and admiration and our reverence. This is a very important key distinction between reverence and worship. Catholics do not worship saints, never have, never will. Worship is only due to God, and therefore God will receive our worship, and only God. The very first commandment, I am the Lord your God, you shall not have other gods before me, tells us that only God is to be worshipped. However, we know from our own experience, in the case of myself, my dear sainted mother and father, who were lovely people and always looked out for the good in life and brought me up to understand that the goodness in life is not only more beautiful, but more powerful than the evil in life a lesson that I have re re revered all my life. This is something that all of us have, most likely, that have had a good family home. However, there are many, many more people who have gone before us, who have lived exemplary lives, who have been beacons of righteousness, who have, in fact, endeavored to be holy. Some have been recognized by the church as saints, and we could all rattle off a few names of saints whose names we know. But none of them are our object of worship, and this is something extremely key. For our separated brethren, one of the criticisms they have of the Catholic Church is that we worship the saints. Well, of course, nothing could be further from the truth. We do not. We revere them. We use their examples as evidence of what a holy life can be, what it means to seek righteousness, and be holy. We all want that. It's said that only saints go to heaven. That means for you and me, we're all works in progress. We're along the line somewhere. We haven't achieved sainthood yet, but we're still alive. And as long as we are alive, there's an opportunity for us to achieve holiness and righteousness. And we should all strive for that. 
for a life lived in pursuit of holiness is saintly. And therefore, we can, in fact, make ourselves more worthy of the free gift that God has given us of eternal salvation. In this very materialistic world, it might seem at times that people who are capitalistically oriented, as I am, and believe that one should produce good works, are driven by the fact that we believe that our faith in God gives us an incentive to produce good works. If, in fact, we provide for our neighbor out of our good works, whether that be direct alms to one who is in need, or whether it's a job, say, if we happen to run an organization that needs employees. Myself, in my business career, I've had many employees. I don't want any more now. I worked 55 years before I retired, and I certainly don't want to have to deal with that again, because there are all kinds of pratfalls dealing with employees. But nonetheless, the jobs that are provided by capitalist industry provide for people's welfare. Therefore, that's a way of giving to the community. If the capitalist profits from such an effort, well, that's due by virtue of the fact that they took the risk. The risk. They had the capital invested. They had their energy invested. They had their storefront that they managed, perhaps. These are things that are due one in a society where production is based upon one's effort and the fruits of one's production are in fact the gifts that they receive for that production. We believe that if in fact there is a need, there is something drives one to provide that need. This is what the capitalist does. That is not to say that we work our way into heaven. Heaven is a free gift. And if, in fact, we do good works on earth by virtue of the fact that we have faith in God and we see Jesus as our personal Savior, then, in fact, we are acting in a righteous manner. This is, in fact, what we revere in the saints of old. Those who have given their lives, perhaps in martyrdom, and have gone directly to their final reward, and they've borne the faith on their hearts, even when persecuted, and they would not deny it, and those who have led exemplary lives, Mother, Mother Teresa comes to mind, who worked tirelessly to provide for the indigents and the needy in her city of Calcutta. These are the kind of examples that we all aspire to. They don't necessarily fit what we are living in our capitalistic society, however. We can't just necessarily devote ourselves 100% to the poor. We have to take care of ourselves and our families. But we can, in fact, do the best job we possibly can at whatever our chosen profession might be. This is, in fact, giving praise to God for the opportunity to produce good works. And the good works themselves are, in fact, inuring to our credit. If, in fact, we look at sainthood in this way, then we have a healthy reverence for those who have given us an example of what it's like to lead holy lives. God love you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, as I've said over and over, the finest gift that we can offer to God is a gift of ourselves. And so we pray. Lord God, receive us as our gift in honor of the holy men and women who live with you in glory. May we always be aware of their concern to help and save us. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Today we keep the festival of your holy city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, around your throne, the saints, our brothers and sisters, sing your praise forever and ever. And may Almighty God bless you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Liturgy of the Word for All Saints Day has concluded. Let us go forth in this place to serve the Lord and one another. God love you all, and thank you for being with me today.